Welcome to In Conversation. In this program, we will be discussing with our panel challenges that face seniors today. We all age every day. We all want to age well. And for many of us, aging is uncharted and uncertain territory. If we look at the demographics of the United States, we realize that the oldest of the Generation Xers are now 52. The baby boomers are ages 53 to 71, and our silent or World War II generation are ages 72 to 95 as of 2017. Those 50 years of age and older represent about 32% of our country's population. And the fastest growing segment of this population are those 85 years of age and older. And surprisingly, our millennial generation will be larger than our baby boom generation. And they are now 22 to 40 years old. So you can see that aging is an issue important to all of us. And that is why we want to discuss it today. We have with us four panel members from the Osher Lifelong Learning Institute at California State University, Long Beach, also known as OLLI. Um, and I would like to introduce them. Malcolm Green is um, a former president of our Osher Lifelong Learning Institute and retired from a career in aerospace and also from a career, a shorter career in the California Technology, Trade and Commerce Agency in Long Beach. Karen McDonough is the um, co-chair of our curriculum committee. Um, she has an extensive history in theater and also in speech communication both within industry and also within the K-12 and university setting. Martha Valenzuela uh, is our youngest member. Uh, she is our baby boomer on the panel today. And Martha retired in 2012 from a long career both in banking and with the city of Vernon. And Florence St. Peter has a, had a career in modeling, singing, dancing, uh, and also in advocacy for HIV issues, and is now a certified teacher of Tai Chi uh, within our local community. So you can see that we have some expertise on our panel in the field of aging. We all at some point in our life retire, and as you can see, our panel is retired from careers. But all of us retire in one way or another when our families move um, away, when we lose somebody to death. Um, and so there is for all of us a period of retirement. And so what I would like to do is to open our discussion by asking our panel, what was it like to begin your retirement? And Malcolm, I'll start with you. Well, retirement is always a change. And if in your career you've had changes, that sometimes helps because it's a new job. I've got a new boss. Um, sometimes you have to get promoted. Sometimes you get change, change responsibilities. Sometimes uh, you have uh, to move to a different country, to a different city, and you have to begin again. I think it's easier for people who've had changes in their careers to be able to retire, because now I'm working for a boss who knows what I want. Yeah. Martha, do you have? Well, when I retired in 2012, <clears throat> it, was, um, it, it was a bit scary and exciting at the same time because um, at that point in my life, I had to make a change. Uh, to begin with, I had to downsize. So I moved from the Inland Empire to the beach area. So that, that was a huge step for me. And then to deciding what is the next chapter in my life. And that's when I found uh, Ollie and uh, I'm just so um, happy and that Long Beach offers such a wonderful program to meet people and to keep your mind active. How, was it scary for you, Karen, to well, retire? Uh, first of all, I want to make a correction. I consider myself a baby boomer. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> because I am only a year, two, two years in front of the baby boomers, and I feel I reaped all the benefits of being a baby boomer. Uh, I had not thought of something that Belcom just mentioned, and that is 
I have changed professions five times. That's why that strange kind of trail there of things that I've done. Uh, I was following a very successful husband, and every time he was promoted, he was up and out somewhere to another state. So I've lived in five different states, recreated myself, and I never thought about it in terms of recreating myself as a retired person. But that's exactly what I did. I, w I retired at 65, and I would have stayed longer, but my CEO was retiring, and um, he was a, I was a corporate trainer, and that's not uh, something that companies often hang on to if they have opportunities to, to uh, save some money, and so I, I decided that was a perfect time to retire. And recreation, Florence, I know you talk a lot about that. I have re recreated myself so many times that um, it's too long a story to go into right now, but you mentioned some of them. But this last, uh, last vocation or career, whatever you want to call it, I think has been the most satisfying outside of entertaining for seniors and so forth and so on. Um, it wasn't scary. Mm -hmm. I retired partially at the age of 63 doing taxes, and uh, then I retired fully when I was 68. And that's when I found uh, the, the gay community and they needed help. And I started singing to help raise money and I got involved with uh, um, different, uh, different uh, events around the country. I mean, around the city. And finally, I ended up as a certified teacher doing what I do right now. And I love every bit of it. I love my seniors, and it makes me very happy. So from your, each of your perspectives, how do you feel about your own aging now that you are retired? Martha, you look like you might <laughs> want to say something. Well, at this point, I, you know, I feel better now than I did in my 30s, 40s, and I have changed my lifestyle. Now I, of course, I do everything possible to, to age as best I can. Uh, so I, I, the exercise, the eating well, and the, um, the social groups um, really, really help the aging process. Plus, I do speak to people um, various ages, um, well, the older age, uh, older seniors. Um, <laughs> what have you done to, to maintain that, you know, that, that great outlook, that whatever it is. And um, I do get advice from them because I do think about my aging. And of course, you know, like all of us, we want to age as well as possible. So. How do you think society in general views aging? Florence? Uh, that is a little difficult to say because in my travels, I come face to face with young people and I know how they look at me and seniors that get on, because I travel by bus. Mm -hmm. I don't drive anymore. and then there are the seniors and how they perceive me. It's, and I think it differs mm -hmm. depending on the situation that you may be in. Mm -hmm. I know I've had some who don't believe I'm as old as I am mm -hmm. and as active as I am and ask me, how do you do it? And I tell them, you know. But I've been active all my life. And I think that's what the people see mm -hmm. in me. Mm -hmm. Because so far, knock on wood, I've been able to manage my life and everything as well as I can. And the, the thing that uh, helps me is my interfacing with so many different styles of life mm -hmm. and people that I meet on on the buses. With, in multiple in age multi groups. In multiple mm -hmm. age groups. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Karen? What? Well, since I'm a part of the baby boomers, there's a whole <laughs> lot of us out there who uh, are all doing this together. 
And so it's not like you're alone aging, you know, there's a whole lot of people out there. And um, I think Ollie is a wonderful way. I really believe it's about um, us having a sense of humor. Mm -hmm. And because what else are you going to do when you wake up one morning and you, you know, you can't see out of one eye and there's some strange <laughs> thing happening to you? And you look um, like your mother. Yes. <laughs> I'd be pleased to look like my mom. Uh. <laughs> um, but I, I think a sense of humor, I think a social network, and as I said, most of my friends are baby boomers or, or, or younger, mm -hmm. and, um, and, and, and keeping the mind active. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, th those, to me, that's the answer. Yes. You, you, could, you could dwell on the fact that I, did, I lost a, some sight there for a day or two, but it turned out to be something that was not serious, mm -hmm. and so, that I laugh at. I make jokes about it now. <laughs> <laughs> Malcolm, do you have any wisdom to add here? Well, it's, uh, it's funny. Uh, people, uh, people have to find their own level. And uh, I remember 20 years ago, I was playing with uh, tennis and golf with some young guys. Uh, and uh, now, 20 years later, I'm playing tennis with guys my age again. They're the same guys. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the people who are 10 years older than I am are still 10 years old, and the, and the ones who are 10 years younger are still 10, 10 years younger. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, have, we have a cohort, it's a rather broad cohort, about 10, 15 years one, one way or the other. And it's, uh, it, it's, it's those friends that have, uh, that have stayed with me. Um, we always talk about the fact that uh, we talk more about our health than we used to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We uh, refer yeah. to that as the organ recital. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Every conversation has to have an organ recital, yes. yes. <laughs> but, uh, but sometimes those are brief. And, uh, and I think it's the, the fact that we're, we come from the same generation and we do the same kind of things, we have the same interests, and our interests change as our abilities change. Uh, but we all do it together. I think that's important, to have people to talk to and people to commiserate with. Mm -hmm. And that keeps your mind active. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Your body active, and and it it's stimulating. Right, it keeps you wanting to get up, mm -hmm. keeps you wanting to do things. Uh -huh. I try you know? and stay connected with my younger nieces, to to just find out their their language and what they do, and and when you do that, then they think I'm so cool mm -hmm. because I I do try and 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 see their world. Mm -hmm. Come into their Absolutely. world, yeah. and um, and just you know act crazy like them and stuff. So um, so at this point they don't see me so much as you know my old aunt or something. But um, <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's fun, and it, you know it does keep you young when you like. Okay, so this is what the new generation's doing. This is their new language. This these are the the words they're using, the dances, the mm -hmm. music that they're listening to. It, it all does help. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. So specifically, what are some of the things that you do in order to age well, specifically? Well, I have a regimen. Uh, five or six days out of the week, I get up and do my practice uh, at 5.30 in the morning. And what is your practice? My practice is Tai Chi Cha, and it's also called moving meditation or joy through movement. I know when I get through doing my practice, which takes about 40 minutes, and then I meditate for about 10 minutes, and I feel, I feel so good. Mm -hmm. I know who I am, I like who I am, and I think I project that to people that I meet in my, wherever I go. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, then I just go out and do what I have to do for that day. You know? And it makes me feel good, especially when I see seniors who take my class and seniors who are in their 80s. I have a student who is in her 90s and she comes in like this and she does the movements and her face lights up. That makes me feel wonderful mm -hmm. inside mm -hmm. to see the progression. Uh -huh. But uh, teaching Tai Chi and uh, telling my students to practice, it's wonderful to see them progress from this to this. 
and come in with a smile. Excellent. You know. Karen, anything to add? How, how do you, what do you do to age well? What do I do to age well? I do a couple of things. I have done Tai Chi. Yeah. I continue to do Tai Chi um, once a week, though, mm -hmm. with a lot of other people. Um, I discovered meditation mm -hmm. for me. Uh, I found it through a class at Ollie, mm -hmm. and the meditation program was based on quantum physics. Mm -hmm. And it's the whole notion of this, this, the, uh, the control of the brain, of what, mm -hmm. that, what that brain can do for you. And I, um, I'll just give you a real quick example. I had some pain that I was dealing with and I was trying to meditate and focus on getting rid of the pain. And the instructor came up to me and said, Karen, so what, how did you approach it? And I said, well, I really focused on trying to get rid of that pain. And she said, no, no, no. What you must do is focus on what it felt like when you didn't have pain. Mm -hmm. And that's what I've been doing ever since, <laughs> focusing on not having pain, what it felt like. Uh, how I walk, how I move, uh, how I talk, how I look at the world. Um, I am the greatest performer you have ever seen. <laughs> because I perform feeling good, feeling young, and feeling active. That's wonderful. <laughs> you can fool most of the people most of the time. <laughs> well, you sure fool us. <laughs> <laughs> good. Martha. Um, aging is a mindset, so you have to, you, you have a choice whether you just want to be, have a sedentary life or an active life. And we all know that being active is the better choice. So, um, so I, 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 I go to the gym three to four times a week, and the days that I don't, um, through the Ollie program, I found a group of people that uh, life love to cycle. By, uh, mm -hmm. we, ha we're, we have a, a, a club, a bicycle club, which is great for me because I was never really active in my younger years. And yeah, I rode a bike, but um, the class teaches you the, the, the rules of, of, of riding on streets and it builds up your confidence. And then you, you build this network with your, mm -hmm. your biking group. So we, we um, bicycle like all over, we've gone to Ojai, which was great, and did an overnight and, and cycle. So um, that and a meditation, meditation, yes, has helped me also tremendously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Malcolm. Well, I think a lot of it has to do with staying physically active as well as mentally active. Um, when I'm not playing tennis or golf, which is quite a few days, um, I have been going over to the Life Fit Center and, uh, and it's, it's so much better than going to a regular gym because they're all old people over there. <laughs> <laughs> you've got to be 49 to get... big, strong bodies. You have, to get, you have to be 49 to get in the door. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and I see the same people, uh, and, and they're, they're very faithful about, about maintaining their, their health. Uh, and I see them, uh, if, if, if somebody's not there one day, people say, well, where's Gina? Where's, uh, where, where's Ina? Where's, where's, where's Harry? And, uh, and they come back. And so, but there, there's, a, there's, a, there's a coterie, and we all uh, care about one another. Mm -hmm. if, uh, so if you're going to be out for a week, you tell people so they don't worry about you. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it's, uh, and, and it's, it's, it's an inspiration to see people who are 10 years older than I am being able to lift those barbells better than I can. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's an incentive. Right? Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. It's a, they work at it, and I, ha I need to work at it, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I hear two things, really. Uh, I hear exercise, um, well, three things, meditation, <laughs> and um, uh, intellectual stimulation, and, and maybe a fourth one, which is socialization. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Because I, I know how I feel when I go into my classes. And if I don't show up or if I'm 10 minutes late, they call me on my cell phone. Florence, where are you? And I say, I'm right down the street. I'll be there in a minute. And all my classes have become my extended family. Uh -huh. And I love walking in and seeing them smile. Yeah. And, you know, it makes me feel good up here. Of course, it's here. good for you. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what role does family play in your 
well aging? Well, I've had a little problem with my daughter for a while, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but she's, she's coming around. She was beginning to realize that at 80 years old, I can't do what I used to do five years ago, let alone 10 years ago, because she keeps saying, Mom, you need to do this. Help me do this. And I said, I beg your pardon? <laughs> nope, I can't do that. <laughs> You'll have to find somebody else to help <laughs> do it, or she'll do it herself. But my entire family, close-knit, um, they can't get over the fact that as old as I am, I'm as active as I am. So you have a supportive family. Mm -hmm. Karen, you're, you're shy a little bit of family, as I recall. Yes, I have a very small family, and what family I do have is, is back in Minnesota. Um, I have a husband, I have a, st a stepson who's in, in, uh, in the area. Um, but so that has never, I haven't had to, or I guess I've been forced to, look out for others to be a part of my family. And that's what I have. I have an extended family of friends mm. um, that I know that I can call on at any time for mm. any, any reason. In fact, uh, three of my friends in the last few months all became widows. Mm. And I've been able to step forward and help them although for the most part they are doing just fine. They are, they, uh, they, have, they all have extended families and that's, that's helpful, but they're all my family too. Mm -hmm. I also have a small, very small family, just one sister with um, two kids. Um, I don't have children, so my different groups are my family and it's nice because you can pick your friends right so i have my <laughs> wonderful uh, church friends I, i'm still very close to my high school friends they're like my sisters um the ollie group so you know you get a little bit of everything and you make up your own family and, mm -hmm. and it's it's wonderful you do need that support because there has been many times where i have had to reach out and Good reach for, for them and they're there Good they're there you. and mm -hmm. it, it does help yes malcolm anything to add Yes, I, I have noticed something strange and unexpected. Um, even though my children and my grandchildren do not live uh, in California, um, I have found out that when I talk to them, they're more similar to me than they used to be because they've gotten <laughs> older too. <laughs> and so their opinions, their tastes uh, in music, in art, in literature are getting closer to mine or perhaps even better, Mine, my, my <laughs> tastes are getting closer to theirs. Uh -huh. So I, th I think uh, the percentage difference between our ages has shrunk uh -huh. because they're, they're approaching retirement. One of them is already retired. Wow. Yeah, my, uh, my, my grandson has a job and he's out of college and uh, my, my other granddaughter just got her PhD and, uh, and she, uh, so, so we, I'm, I'm talking to my equals when I'm talking to, the, to my yeah. children or to my grandchildren. Yeah. I would also add the whole area of social interaction with, the, with all the uh, abilities we have now with Facebook, with FaceTime, with uh, Skype. Um, <clears throat> I actually taught my grandnephews Incy Wincy Spider over the, with the camera and we all do it together and we sing together and so that has kept my presence at least so that they, they remember that they do have this, this auntie in, in far away. Um, but I do try to get there. We, we travel a lot, and so we try to get back to see them. But there are long periods of time when we don't see them. And so I, I think the whole notion of, of what social interactions uh, have now been able to do for us uh, with through all the tech, the devices, the gadgets, whatever you want to call them, that are available to us. And I take advantage of those. So well, Malcolm, you mentioned music. Now, my husband was a jazz musician, so I have a huge collection of jazz, jazz. records mm. and stuff. And when I was cleaning house, you know, when I was younger and I'd clean house and I'd put the record on and <laughs> blast it all <laughs> over the house while I'm cleaning and everything. And I've kept these records. And I, my daughter used to run when I, put on my jazz record. She said, oh, 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 there she goes. And, you know, but now she's playing jazz. Mm -hmm. She's listening to the music that 
<laughs> I mm -hmm. grew up with and so forth and so on. And so it's my grandson. Mm -hmm. And he ended up playing uh, guitar, uh, not guitar, clarinet and saxophone. Mm -hmm. And he wants my collection when I go to the other side of the grass. Ah. <laughs> you know. So your children find that you're getting smarter, right? Yes. <laughs> That's right. Yes. And I think right. the children are getting wiser, too. They are. <laughs> it works both ways. It's a two-way street. Well, what we've talked about now is that in retirement, we often have to reinvent ourselves. Mm -hmm that aging can be a very positive thing mm -hmm. uh, and that there are many things that we, that we do and that we can do in order to age well. Uh, we're going to take a little break, but when we come back, we're going to touch on technology mm -hmm. and its role in aging. And we're also going to talk about some of the barriers and some of the solutions to the difficulties of aging well. So we'll be right back. Make a difference in someone's life. With the ever-increasing amount of senior citizens in the United States, the need for counselors, caregivers, advocates, and product developers continues to rise. Be there for someone and see how rewarding it can be. You can become part of this exciting field with a degree from Cal State Long Beach. Welcome back. We've had a lively discussion with our panel about how to age well, but we also have to recognize that there are barriers to aging well. And so I'd like, first of all, to ask the panel, what is it that you see as barriers to aging well, either in yourselves or in your family or acquaintances? Well, I think for myself, uh, the real barrier has been this steady, uh, I have tremors. Mm -hmm. uh, they call them essential tremors. It started with this hand, and now it's in, this, in both hands. And sometimes when, if I, especially if I go out to eat, I have to ask the waiter or the cook, to cut up, whatever, because mm -hmm. if I try to cut it, it'll end up on the floor, mm -hmm. uh -huh. you know. Yeah. So that's been my primary barrier mm -hmm. to aging. Uh, other than that, you know, I get up at, like everybody else. I get up with aches and pains, and mm -hmm. but I see, I, you know, I've had uh, arthritis since I was 18. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I work around that. I work around, you work through your mm -hmm. pain, and so do I yeah. when my arthritis uh -huh. comes. To, you know, so that's my barrier. That's your barrier. Mm -hmm. Karen, any, can you contribute anything here? Well, I, I just, when I, when I hear, and, and Florence is certainly not the only one, who many of my friends have very serious diseases and life-threatening diseases, and and I often count myself blessed because so far I've not had to deal with that. But one of the things I have accepted, and, I, and as I said, I try, to, I try to find the organ recital that I can create a, a new and wonderful story because I have, you have these strange little events. Your body is doing things. It's changing. And it's, it's uh, you know, as I said, I, I had lost my sight out of my eye. And it was, turned out to be something called an optic migraine, which I'd never heard of. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a headache, and it hasn't returned. Mm -hmm. uh, three years ago, I had a, a episode of vertigo. Oh. Who the, what is that? <laughs> I mean, it's like, surprise, you're getting older. Mm -hmm. and, and so you just have to kind of go with it. But as I said, mm -hmm. nothing has been life-threatening. Um, I have friends who are dealing with that, and I try to be as supportive as possible. And I also try to watch very carefully how they are handling it. What are they doing? What what are they uh, What are they thinking? What are they feeling? And um, I'm learning a lot that way. And. Uh, Helpfully the, the, with the medical world every day making new discoveries, uh, maybe, <laughs> maybe I'll escape that. I don't know. Mm -hmm. 
Martha? Um, I think for a lot of people is loneliness um, that um, can cripple them. And if you don't have that family support and, and you know, for I have some friends that now their children have moved away and so that the, the children that was their entire life mm -hmm. and now uh, they don't have that. And so, um, and I tell them about Ollie and to get connected to these social groups to help them because they can fall into a deep, deep depression. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Malcolm, anything? Well, um, there are physical barriers and then there are other kinds of barriers. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the barrier that I'm thinking of is mobility. Uh, you just can't move around like you used to. Now, uh, with exercise and with, uh, with acti various activities, it, it makes it easier, uh, but still there are limits to what you can do. And uh, uh, I'm not using a golf cart yet, <laughs> 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 but I will someday, just like everybody else does mm -hmm. eventually. Uh, and uh, things, like aches and pains are all part of it get up in the morning and say, well, hope this goes away in the next 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll give it 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and then eventually it goes away. Yeah. And you're taking a lot more pills. Mm -hmm. uh, and another thing too, um, my eyesight has been going. Uh, it's still reasonably good, but uh, I, I do notice that uh, mm -hmm. I'm less eager to drive at night, mm -hmm. particularly if it's a long distance and I'm tired. So I so this this does um, limit the uh, entertainment possibilities, mm -hmm. like going up to Pasadena yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and coming back mm -hmm. at ten o'clock or eleven o'clock at night. Uh, so I don't do that anymore. Well, that's a barrier that I that I that I, I can I can live with. Mm -hmm. But you just organize your life around that. around that, and you spend a lot less money on gasoline. <laughs> and you can put that money towards towards uh, streaming on you can watch movies at home. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> uh, the other thing is that I have noticed, you know, because I do have tremors in both hands that I just found out they have tools for mm -hmm. eating tools mm -hmm. I saw for those, people yeah. with, uh, and I've been talking to my seniors about Mm -hmm. about getting these tools mm -hmm. so that they don't spill everything all over yeah. themselves and you know mm -hmm. which is embarrassing yeah mm -hmm. and the other thing is that I almost had an accident on the Pasadena freeway because my depth perception mm -hmm. was not what it used mm -hmm. to be and uh, all the lights the red lights mm -hmm. was one red bar mm -hmm. and I was like this, yeah. close to yeah. them, and I said, "Okay, okay, that's time. It's time for me to stop." Mm -hmm. Yeah, so and I that's very admirable because the denial—you can be in denial just so long, and then you could it be it could be very serious. Yeah. And I'm glad to hear that you did that. Yeah, because uh, I've had uh, uh, there's a lady that comes to my class. She almost went into a deep depression because. Her daughter took her keys away mm. from her. She could not drive anymore. And she went into her apartment and it was like pulling teeth to get her out of there mm -hmm. to, and show her there is life after. Yes. You know. And this uh, leads right into is something I want to talk about and that is there was a national survey of adults born between 1920 and 1947 that was reported in the uh, Journal of Research on Aging in January of 2017, so it's very uh, recent. And that the results indicated that 30% of respondents reported loneliness that either developed, improved, or remained the same over that five-year period. And when they looked at reasons for the loneliness, they found three things. One was functional limitations, which mm -hmm. you've talked about, low family support, mm -hmm. and strained friendships um, as, as ha causing people to become lonely, to become isolated, and to become depressed. So my question then is, considering these results, 
what would your recommendations be for decreasing feelings of loneliness, depression, and isolation? Mm -hmm. I, I, would, I would seek some sort of, 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 I would examine, first of all, I guess, what are you interested in? What do you like to do? And how can you do more of that? And in our, my case, it was uh, the, the uh, Ollie because it, there were 60 classes to pick from. There were physical, there were clubs. There was, there was so much. It was a matter of not doing too much, which tends to be my problem. And I know you find that difficult to believe, <laughs> but I, I tend to do too much. So um, uh, I have allowed myself even to say it's okay to try to take a nap. I can't, I don't nap very well because I know I'm missing out on something. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I, I, think, I think you have to do a little self-examination. I think you have to say, okay, this is crazy and this is not making me well. This can make me sick. Mm -hmm. What do I need to do? What do I like to do? How can I do that? And explore all the resources. There are so many resources out there. Um, and we, we, you know, we need to find them and use them. Mm -hmm. I have found that I have two friends that have... Only two? <laughs> yes. That's okay. I'll be your friend. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. You know, I have two friends who have fallen, mm -hmm. and they've gone into their apartments and trying to get them out of that apartment. They feel mm -hmm. locked in. You know, they're afraid to go out. Even with the, uh, the with a walker or cane, mm -hmm. they don't want to go out there anymore. They don't want to see their friends anymore. Yeah. So I've been running back and forth between the two of them mm -hmm. and my teaching and yeah. stuff. It know. is a legitimate fear. I mean, yeah. we yeah. do recognize yeah, fear. the fear of sure. falling once you've yeah. yeah. fallen. And getting them out there, that's, that's the key. Even though, you know, I've asked them, what do you like to do? Mm -hmm. You know, one lady, she arranges flowers and she has a beautiful sense of form mm -hmm. and color and stuff. Mm -hmm. But she does it in her apartment, she doesn't want to go out, mm -hmm. you know. And the other gentleman, he has me a little worried because uh, he's talking about uh, uh, when I go. Uh, just have the party, mm -hmm. and he's donated his body to mm -hmm. science and mm -hmm. stuff. But he's given up the f the feeling. The we fight. used to go dancing together, uh -huh. and to see him go from that stage to where he is now, when I go up there, it just breaks my heart. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Barbara, Martha. I think. I think awareness is, is so important mm -hmm. and having these conversations and having the programs that Ollie has um, brings awareness to people that, that are feeling this way and gives us a better understanding and also helps us try and find ways of how to reach out to, to mm -hmm. a person that is kind of feeling a little down or, because it could be scary when you just go into um, the university and or where whatever group you're in it, it is a little scary but if we if we have awareness of this then maybe we can all do our little part in helping someone um, get over that I, I would also add permission I think there are people who are reluctant to take advantage of all the resources that are out there because they feel that that is somehow shows that they can't handle something and I think when you get to certain ages, you have permission from everybody to take, take use of whatever is out there to help you. And, and if, that, if, if, it, if it means saying it to somebody, you have permission, you need to do this, mm -hmm. I would do so. I think I'll approach it next time I run into it's okay. them, give them permission to yes. say, it's okay. Yeah. It's all right. Yeah. Be the first mm -hmm. on your block. Yeah. <laughs> you know. And I, I also think that if people won't go out, bringing Bring in the bring things the into them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Malcolm? I would think that uh, social isolation 
is, 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 a, is a major issue if you don't try to fight it consciously. Um, you have to have something to look forward to. Mm -hmm. You have to have plans for next month or the month after or next year. You're looking forward and preparing for some event that will occur. And I think this is important. Uh, in the case of Ali, uh, I see people ask me, um, uh, when is the next uh, <laughs> copy of the sun coming out? When is the next? <laughs> because I want to see the courses that are going to be offered next session. Mm -hmm. and, and I say, well, maybe Monday, maybe Tuesday. Well, I'll come over on Monday. Maybe it'll be ready. Uh, they're looking forward to the next session of classes because they know there's so, going to be something in there that'll be interesting. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and then, then they sign up for the classes, and guess what? Now they're looking forward to the classes to begin. Mm -hmm. So uh, this, this kind of anticipation and looking forward to having more fun a month from now, or two months from now, or maybe next week, mm -hmm. or maybe tomorrow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, uh, I, I just talked to somebody yesterday, and as, as the, because of my role as a, the, in the curriculum committee, and she said to me, you know, that, that period of time between the sessions, I really get lonely. Mm -hmm. I really get depressed. Mm -hmm. And, I, you know, it hadn't, I, I guess because I never have any time, because I'm working on it, trying to get that class ready for them, that, um, that there are people who feel that way. And, and uh, that's their social network. That's it, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, as a student, as well as a teacher at Ali. Um, that period of time, mm -hmm. you know, I tell, I stress practice. Mm -hmm. I have teaching tapes that they can use to take up their time, you know. And when we get together again, they come back and they say, I missed you. Mm -hmm. Isn't that you nice? Know, yeah, it's a good <laughs> feeling. And they say, I good, missed good you. Good for you too, right? Yeah. yeah. Good for you. Uh, yeah. Well, Barbara, you've seen this. Uh, but so, sometimes when you're t teaching a course, you, uh, you dread the fact that, oh, we only have about two weeks left before I have to start the course. But in, 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 other, in other cases, you kind of look forward to it as well. Mm -hmm. uh, the last day of classes, I'm always saying, wow, thank goodness it's over. <laughs> <laughs> I've got, I've got my... I, my you're talking. Yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I, 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 I finished teaching my class. Mm -hmm. And then I start... About a week later, I start saying, well, I've got some ideas for the next session. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And I start writing them down. And uh, so I, I'm constantly looking forward to new things. Uh, when, I, when I was working, I used to set my alarm clock in the morning uh, for uh, five days a week. Now I set my alarm clock seven days a week. I've yeah. always got something really? going on in the morning. Yeah. Yes. I look forward to my time to myself on Sundays, sometimes <laughs> on Saturdays. Yeah. Well, that's the beauty you know, of being because, retired, right? Yeah. You yeah. can be as busy as you want or not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it seemed when we were talking in preparation for this um, that we also talked about not only l having long-term goals or things to look forward to, but getting up every morning mm -hmm. with at least one goal mm -hmm. in mind, one purpose mm -hmm. for, the, for the day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So th we talked, um, um, we haven't really talked about um, family support and friendships as breaking those barriers to aging well. I think we hit on it in the first half of our program, but uh, in terms of breaking down barriers to aging well, how do we deal with family and friendships? Well. I have a friend, um, I've known her 45 years, oh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and we see each other maybe once, maybe twice a year, but we talk, and uh, uh, it's like we pick up right where we left off, mm -hmm. you know. I have been a loner, all, actually, all my life, I've never really liked uh, I can entertain myself. I've always mm -hmm. been able to do that, even as a kid. Mm -hmm. And um, I enjoy my own company. Mm -hmm. So I don't really get lonely uh, as some of my other friends mm -hmm. do. Um, I have one friend, she's very needy. And uh, I just, it, it 
it pulls at me. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it upsets me and I have to back away and then come back to her, you know, in order to deal with that neediness mm -hmm. that a lot of seniors have, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know. But uh, as far as needing uh, a lot of support from other people, I get that from my extended family of students, students. Mm -hmm. you know. But personally, I like my music. I go home, Listen to put that my jazz. music on, <laughs> yes. and love you know, I love my jazz. Yeah. <laughs> You know, uh -huh. but uh, no, I. It, that's the way I deal with uh -huh. it. Mm -hmm. Any other observations? Uh, well, I I actually did a reversal as I, we talked about a little bit. I I had my schedule was filled from morning to night, and I missed my alone time. I missed the time to to read the books that I have piled up higher mm -hmm. and higher and higher. Um, I missed the music. I was a volunteer at the K-Jazz station, so yes. I loved jazz, yes. um, li listening to good music. Um, so I'm trying very hard, not very successfully, but I'm trying very hard to pull back a little bit and say, you know what, I'm going to try to have one whole day where I don't have to be somewhere and mm -hmm. do something. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I have it, it's wonderful. Yes. It's quite wonderful. Mm -hmm. I don't want to find my, I don't want to have a whole week of that, but I want to have some of that. I think we all need that at one time or another. You have to have some time to yourself to regroup right. and enjoy your, yourself. You know, yourself. Mm -hmm. you know. So let me ask another question. How do you see evolving technologies as um, being uh, important or not important uh, in aging well and in some of the barriers that we've talked about? Yeah. I, I just think of one line, first of all, it's Dickens' line, it was the best of times, it was the worst <laughs> of times. <laughs> because I have seen technology just drive people crazy, especially, um, the boomers and, and older uh, that did not grow up with this. Mm -hmm. And getting, first of all, the digits to work, you know, Thank getting you. these fingers to work mm -hmm. and, and uh, understanding the, the, the mapping of an iPhone and an iPad and, and Skype and all these things. But at the same time, I mean, I think maybe that day might come when I'm not going to be able to drive. Mm -hmm. And hopefully that driverless car will be ready for me. <laughs> Yes. Because, I mean, look at the technology that it could be out there. Mm -hmm. So I just, I try to embrace it. I participate in technology. I'm not great at it. And there are times when I say, I have spent three hours on Facebook, and what have I learned? No more of that, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. Yes, it could be a blessing and a curse at the same time. Um, I have a very close uh, cousin that lives in, in Oregon, and Thanks to technology, mm -hmm. I'm able to see all the activities that her two yeah. girls are in, and I feel like I'm right there. So that's great. The only problem is, yeah, when your computer goes out, then it's like, oh, <laughs> gosh, you know, I need someone to come fix it. But um, it's, it, it is helpful, it, and, and it helps the, the people that are lonely because you can Skype mm -hmm. whoever you want, and you feel like that person is there, mm -hmm. right there with you. So, And I think in terms of lifelong learning, which we're all advocates for, yeah. if you can't get out, um, it, that there are ways to learn um, using some of the technologies, mm -hmm. if you can learn to use those technologies. <laughs> I see a time with all this new technology. I, I was also a science fiction fan. Mm -hmm. I still am. And I remember reading a book about the human race becomes so dependent on this technology, it makes them lazy. They don't want to get out and do anything. They always have a robot or something to take care of well, them. You, you see our young children. Yeah. You know, they I don't go the out and, and play their. <laughs> You know, adults too. It's making us lazy. It's making us not want to be out there. Mm -hmm. 
Emphasis. Interfacing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Personally, I like the feel of a newspaper or a book in mm -hmm. my hand, mm -hmm. you know. And um, that's the downside that I see in the future for us. We are going to become so dependent on technology to take care of us that we don't want to do something for ourselves. I do think that uh, technology can be liberating, however, if you use it correctly. Mm -hmm. And I, th uh, for, for example, uh, uh, we now have phone service that is unlimited mm -hmm. long distance. I can remember the old days when you'd try to say things quickly because <laughs> it was like $3 a minute. And <laughs> now it's unlimited. You get on the phone and you talk to people. Mm -hmm. um, and also, um, my daughter and uh, my son-in-law and I play words with friends. Mm -hmm. So uh -huh. every so every time I go home, I, 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 it's my turn. <laughs> 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 Where have you been? Every time I open open, open, the, open my iPad, it's 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 it's, yeah. it's 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 so, um, and we joke about the kind of words we're using and mm -hmm. things like that. And, uh, and, so and it, it's 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 a kind of competitive thing, but uh, it, it, but see, it, we're doing this without talking to one another. Mm -hmm. There's yeah. still like there's a, there's a certain way of of relating to people that is nonverbal. Right. And in words with friends, mm -hmm. even though it's words, it's still mm -hmm. nonverbal. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a closeness. And, yeah. um, and then, of course, you get on the phone or you, you, you so write a note. What, what Karen said is true. It's the best of times and the worst, worst of, of times, yeah. and we need yes. to learn to yeah. balance it. I, I have one nephew left, one nephew, who has these wonderful three little boys. And all he does is text, so I had to buy an iPhone. But you can't have a conversation texting. No. <laughs> I mean, I mean and, and, but at the same time, you, there's a little microphone there and you can just talk into there. So if the fingers aren't working, you can still get the message across. Um, but it's, it's just not the same. If you're, not the the tone of voice, I want to see their faces. I want to hear what's not being said. So um, even you boomers yeah, are, yeah. are willing <laughs> to give up your technology. <laughs> I think I, I, the technology has its upside mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and its downside. But it, it also yeah. has its downside. Yeah. Well, our technology mm -hmm. is telling us it's time to close this oh, discussion. No. So <laughs> I want to thank you for, for joining us. And uh, I want to leave you with two thoughts, one from um, a woman and one from a man. Um, the first one is from B Betty Friedan. She was a activist and a feminist in the 20th century and she said something about aging that um, I think is pertinent here. She said, aging is not lost youth, but a new stage of opportunity and strength. Mm -hmm. And for us at Lifelong Learning Institutes, um, I take to heart what Henry Ford said and I'm going to have to read it because he was a little more verbose. <laughs> He says, anyone who stops learning is old, whether you're 20 or 80. Anyone who keeps learning stays young. The greatest thing in life is to keep your mind young. Yes. So on behalf of our panel, I'd like to thank you for joining us today and hope that we've given you some insights into how to age well and how to step over those barriers. Thank you. Thank you.